Okay, we're going to set the initial timing and the total timing on this uh, 69 Mustang. It's got a 460 in it. And uh, we can go over a few things along the way. A few people have appreciated the video I put on YouTube about uh, uh, cleaning out needle and seat valves when uh, the needle and seat valve gets stuck open in a holly. So I figured I'd do a little bit on uh, timing. Actually, I'm going to do a lot of timing. I'm going to cover everything. Um, it's going to take a while before we get to timing this. I'm going to go over a lot of stuff. Also, this is actually, even though I'm filming this first, this is actually going to be part two. Part one I'll do and add to YouTube as soon as I'm ready to drop the distributor in this engine. It's a 351 Windsor that I'm putting in my 75 Bronco. That's the 302 I pulled out of it. So I figured this would be a good deal for uh, initially dropping a distributor in and, uh, and video that and just show kind of, you know, how you want to do that and, and set it up right. Make sure you're dropping your distributor in at top dead center of the number one piston. Um, it's uh, compression stroke and not top dead center of the exhaust stroke. You've got to remember the crankshaft uh, turns at twice the speed of the camshaft. And the reason the, cam uh, the crankshaft turns at sp uh, twice the speed is because the uh, timing gears, the crankshaft has a gear that's uh, half the size of the camshaft gear. So the camshaft turns at half the speed of the crankshaft, the crankshaft turns at twice the speed of the camshaft, however you want to look at it. What this means is that for every rotation of your camshaft, your piston has actually gone up and down twice. Remember it's a four-stroke engine, intake, compression, power, exhaust. So when you drop a distributor in, you do want to make sure that you're at top to center of your uh, compression stroke and not top to center of your exhaust stroke because your timing marks will look the same. Okay. So timing marks. Let's look at the timing marks on a Ford and a Chevy. Now this one right here is pretty good. You probably, yeah, actually it looks like you'd be able to see that. This thing has timing marks all the way up to 50 degrees advance, um, marked off at every 10 degrees. So that's actually pretty good. Um, right here you've got 10 degrees uh, retarded 10 degrees after top dead center here you've got zero and then uh, 10 degrees is kind of buried there uh, before top dead center here's 20 degrees before top dead center and if you were to put a wrench on the crankshaft there and and turn it you can see that the timing marks just keep going which is nice to have all the way to 50 before top dead center. So there's 50 before top dead center, there's 40 before top dead center, there's 30, there's 20, coming up on 10 right there, and then right where that little notch is, that's your zero. And then past zero, of course, then you're retarded uh, at, uh, you know, after top dead center. So theoretically, with this harmonic balancer, and it's timing marks that go all the way to 50. You could set your initial advance and your uh, your total timing, which would be you know 2,500 RPM, 3,000 RPM, to get your uh, total timing in from your uh, your centrifugal advance. You could uh, you could set that up theoretically with just a standard cheap timing gun. But if you've got a different setup, like this Chevy Small Block 327. I don't know how well you can see that. This one does not have timing marks hashed out on the harmonic balancer. It simply has top dead center marked on the balancer. So that line right there on the harmonic balancer, right there, that's top dead center. And then what Chevy's done here is they've just put the timing marks on this little timing tab here where you can see the zero mark and then this is all your, your advanced hash marks right here so you kinda have to do your homework with this one to figure out how many degrees each mark is uh, but you can tell where zero is now the good thing is if you can tell where zero is and you go out and you invest in a timing light like this one with this timing light, because of the dial on the back, 
all you need to know is where zero is and then you simply set this pointer and you dial in your advance right here on the timing light and with a timing gun like this this is an old uh, craftsman that I bought 15 years ago and it's been a great uh, great tool to have in the toolbox um, the nice thing is that with a timing light with the dial on the back where you can just dial in your vans on the light you really don't need a harmonic balancer that has all of these hash marks and as nice as having all those hash marks to 50 is to be honest when the engines running I mean I can read them now but with the engine running and the light on it and the strobe flashing on it and and adjusting your your distributor here um, it's it's a bit tricky to see you know which one's 20 which one's 30 uh, which one's 36 etc uh, 34 if you're setting your total timing you know uh, so you might be setting your initial to 14 and, and your total to 34 which you could do with this setup but with this uh, with this timing gun with the dial on the back it's a little bit more expensive I think they're 60 or 70 bucks now not terribly expensive all you really need to know is where zero is and uh, even zero can be hard to find so what I'll usually do is I'll get some uh, blue RTV Let's find an old tube lying around the blue RTV is highly visible so I'll take some and I'll put it on the timing pointer and I'll also mark the um, harmonic balancer like I said zero is all that matters all those other hash marks I really don't need them all I need to do is ensure that I know where zero is And just clean off everything else there so you don't there's no confusion obviously you only want two spots that have the uh, the blue RTV on there you want the uh, the one spot on the pointer pointer and then the one spot um, that is actually uh, topped at center of your number one piston And then of course you can do the same thing with this engine. This is actually pretty easy to see right here, but you can put a little blue right there. And then zero is let's see. right there so just the same thing just marking where zero is on that timing tab that has all the hash marks all I care is the hash mark that shows zero and then of course uh, where the balancer is showing you top dead center <clears throat> get that RTV off my fingers before it gets on the wife's camera. Nice. Alright. So now you can definitely see those two blue marks. Now with the engine running, all you need to do is set the dial as you're pointing at your timing uh, marker there. All you have to do is set this dial turn this dial until the two blues line up it's that simple if the two blues line up and the dial is set to 15 then you're at 15 degrees advance you would think you're at zero because when those two blues line up if you were using a cheap timing gun that would be uh, top dead center zero degrees no advance no retard 
However, since the advance is on this handy dial, if you're sitting at 10 and the two blues line up, then you're at 10 degrees before top dead center, 5 degrees before top dead center. That would be top dead center if it's sitting at zero. If you get everything set up and, and this thing comes all the way over here to, to 50 or 45, then you know you've got your initial timing set way, way too advanced, too far advanced. And, and you just you know turn your distributor there uh, counterclockwise if your distributor is in front to retard it. And, uh, and as you're turning your distributor to retard it, you will notice that you'll also have to retard this dial to keep those two blue dots lined up. So that's how you dial that in. If your distributor is in back like the, the Chevy, then it would be the opposite. You would turn your distributor counterclockwise to advance timing and clockwise to retard timing. But let's back up a little bit.